What up, fam? Welcome to Skill Tree, where we learn how to do just about everything. On today's episode, I thought I'd take a short break from actually making things to learn just a valuable all-around skill. This seemingly simple skill helped hold human history firm from fraying. I'm gonna give myself a level for alliteration there. That was good. It's helped us as a species to make sure we're able to catch food, do surgeries, build giant structures, and circumnavigate the globe. And odds are good you've done it at least twice today to help keep your shoes on your feet. I am, of course, referring to one of mankind's most ancient technologies. The knot. That's right, from sailors to boy scouts, knots are a staple branch on anybody's skill tree. To that end, I will be going over five knots to help you lash, cinch, and secure pretty much anything. I'm even gonna throw in some fun rope extras at the end. So with the scene all set, let's get naughty and level up this skill. Terms. Now before we delve into this wonderful world of knots, there are a few terms you should be familiar with. First and foremost, the end of the rope that you're actually manipulating when you're making a knot is called the working end. All the rest of the rope not involved in the whole knot process is called the standing end. Then there's the bitter end down there where it's actually tied off to something. Incidentally, that's where the phrase to the bitter end comes from. On a ship, the bitter end is where the anchor line actually connects to the ship via a post or metal pins called bits. So when you say you're gonna fight to the bitter end, it just means you're gonna fight until there's nothing left to give. The more you know. I thought it was interesting. The last term we need to cover is a bite, and a bite is any kind of curve or bend in a rope like this. All right, now that we're talking the same language, let's dive into our first knot. The square knot. Also known as the reef knot, the square knot is extremely simple and versatile. Start by taking the two ends of your rope and crossing the right end over and then around your left. Now pass your new left over and around the right. Then just pull the whole thing tight. This knot forms two interlocking bites that close in on each other when they're under a load, making it a suitable choice for binding up like odd bundles of things. All right, that's it, simple knot, one down. So now let's move on to the clove hitch. Now, where a knot is used to tie a line to itself or to another piece of rope, a hitch is used to attach the rope to an object and is relying upon that object to maintain its shape. Without it, it just falls apart. Now, clove hitch is often used in rock climbing because it's really good at taking a hanging load. It's also great for things like hammocks and rope ladders. To perform it, loop your working end around an object, crossing the rope over itself. Then loop around again and pass the working end through the bite you created, pulling the ends in opposite directions to tighten. Super simple, right? What if you're doing work like in a tree or on the side of a cliff and you need to hang a tool up in the very middle of your line? Or I suppose you could be making a rope ladder. I think that's something more regular folks would do. To do this, hold the line in both hands and form a loop by twisting the rope forward and away from you. Then form a second loop in the same way. Now pass the right hand loop behind the left. You know you did it right if both ends of the rope come from between the loops. Then simply thread your object through the loops and pull the ends tight. Fun fact, the clove in clove hitch is the past tense of the word cleave, meaning to split. Which makes a lot of sense seeing how the knot looks like it's split in half. I'm just like a cesspool of Wikipedia facts this episode. Love it. The Bolin Knot. Often called the king of knots, the bolin is considered essential kit from everyone from firefighters to sailors. It forms a fixed eye for securing around an object and the knot only gets tighter the more you pull, yet remains easy enough to even just shake loose when you're done. To tie this one, start by making a loop so that the working end is on top. Then form a bite or wrap the working end around your object. Now pass the end through the bottom of the loop. Then under the standing part, and back through the top of the loop. Finally, pull to tighten. So apparently you should be able to tie this knot off one-handed. So if you're hanging from like a precipice or something and someone throws you down a rescue rope, you should be able to tie it around yourself and put on a really secure knot for them to hoist you up with. All right, so let's see if I can do it. I think, I think my sweater's too dark to see this rope against. Hold on. Okay. All right, I'm Timmy. I have fallen down a well. Mr. Jenkins comes to throw a rope. Here we go. All right, so I wrap it around myself. Half the battle is done. All right, so I make my loop. I send it through the bottom. Ooh, wait, no, that's not gonna happen. I'm gonna die in this well. Here's my rope. I make my loop so that the working end, the working end is on top, through the hole, 
around the end and back through. Oh, I'm safe. This is really easy not actually. Huzzah, your boy Clever survived. So yes, you can tie this one-handed to get yourself out of some trouble if you need to. Or into trouble. I don't know what you're up to, but I approve. The taut line hitch. Okay, so I love this next knot. It's used when you have a line that you need to be able to adjust on the fly to either tighten or provide more slack. And it consists of this tiny little sliding knot you're gonna see, it's great, love it. To make it, start by looping your working end around an object. Send it over your standing part and through the loop form to make a coil. Then wrap it around a second time, forming a second coil around the standing part. Now you're gonna form one last coil outside of the other coils you made and pass the working end through the space made. The finished product is this really clean looking knot that can be slid forward to add tension to the line or back when slack is required. That is a crazy useful little knot right there. Never again will my tarps wave noisily in the air as I try to camp. Just tighten those suckers down and we're good to go. But clever, I hear you lament. All I have are these two different ropes and neither of them are long enough to do the thing I need to do. If only there was a good way to put them together. Fear not my underprepared friend for I know exactly the knot you need. The sheet bend. Real cold in my basement, y'all. Yeah. This simple little knot is just a thing for attaching two ropes together, even if they are wildly different sizes and materials. Start by making a bite in the larger diameter line. Pass the working end of the other rope through the bite, then around both parts of the first rope. We're gonna tuck that end right here underneath where it crosses. Then pull the whole thing tight to form a strong connection between your two lines. If you're worried and you need a little extra strength, once you come to this point, Rather than pulling it tight, make one more loop and tuck it under itself just like you did the first time. This will form the double sheet bend. And with that, my clever little skill monkeys, you've officially earned your monkey scout knot tying badge. I should actually learn how to make little patches. Make little patches so y'all can have a little, little, little monkey scout badge. I think it would be fun. Let me know down in the comments if you want monkey scout badges. I think I can make that happen. So now you know five super useful knots with which to rebuild civilization after the inevitable cat uprising. The only apocalyptic scenario in which one's ability to manipulate balls of yarn will be considered a superpower. Hmm. Something to think about. <laughs> Stupid. But wait, don't go anywhere, there's more. I know, your mind is blown. How can I possibly give you more useful rope skills? Behold the mighty powers of coffee and free time. The short splice. So let's say you like the ability to lengthen your rope that the sheet bend just gave you, but you want something a little bit more permanent. Then I submit for your approval, the short splice. The short splice is a simple and really strong way to combine two pieces of three strand rope together. You're gonna wanna start by binding up the line where you want the splice to begin to stop the strands from unraveling any further. I'm gonna explain how far down you want to bind it in a moment as that's gonna differ depending on the kind of rope you have. Also bind the individual strands to stop them from fraying and unwind them down to your start point. After doing that to both ends of your rope, interlock the strands together like so, ensuring they nest together tightly. Just like interlocking fingers, you wanna make sure those strands go like from the left rope, then the right rope, then the left rope, then the right rope, so on and so forth. I hope that paired with the visual makes sense. Now choosing a strand to start with, we go over the first strand in its path and under the following strand. I'm using a punch to open it up, but any pointy stick will do. Once that's in place, you've finished your first tuck. So every time one strand goes underneath another strand, that's called a tuck. And once you're done with that first one, rotate your rope and grab the next free strand. Then repeat the process. Over the first strand it passes, and then tuck underneath the next strand. Rotate your rope and do it again. Again, skipping one and tucking under the next. Just continue each in turn until you reach the end. You should be left with a fat but even braid. Now move back to the start again and do the exact same pattern moving in the opposite direction. The finished result is a splice that retains 95% of the rope's working capacity and it won't come loose or pull apart under a load. Now with a natural fiber rope like this one, you only need to pull apart enough to do three tucks. 
For a synthetic rope though, you're gonna wanna have at least enough to do five tucks. This is just because that rope's a lot more slippery and needs more tucks to have enough friction to stay together. So now that we've reached the bitter end of messing around with our rope, it's time to put these things away for storage. Also just enough time for a little bonus skill. The chain sinnet. This really easy method of storage is a great way to avoid the inevitable rat's nest I always make, no matter how carefully I tie up my rope. Just always. Just start by making a loop in one end of your line. Then reach through the loop and pull some line through to form another loop. Now reach through that loop and pull out another loop. Continue all the way down, leaving a chain roughly a third of the length of the original. Then when you need to dole out some length, Simply pull on the end and the whole thing will easily unravel. This one has personally been a lifesaver when storing my extension cords. Like it gives you easy rings to hang it up and even though this looks like a hot mess, like you come out, it's just a chain. And when I need some, I just pull. It's like magic. I love this knot. But all right fam, that's all I have for you today. I hope you found that useful or at least fun to watch. If you did, why don't you hit me with some of that thumbs up love and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you know when I release new content. Also, if you could think of any skills you'd like to see me cover, leave it down in the comment section and I will add it to the list. Well, I should get going. Somewhere there's some poor bastard in the Home Depot parking lot trying to secure a piece of plywood to the roof of his car with a granny knot. I'm most certainly not the hero he wants, fam. But I'm the hero he needs. I'm the hero he needs. In the meantime, keep leveling up, you.